Hey everyone, this video tutorial shows how the service life of an OnQAV receiver can be extended by simply installing temperature controlled ventilation. The OnQAV receiver produces a lot of waste heat that builds up in the device. A fan is integrated that starts up much too late. A sticker on the top of the device warns of the high temperatures. In practice, these temperatures can reach up to 50 degrees Celsius. That is too much for the components without cooling. The high temperatures lead to rapid aging of components, capacitors and integrated circuits. Contact problems occur at the connections of the integrated circuits. Known errors such as the no sound problem and the HDMI board error are prevented by cooling in good time. The solution presented in this video ensures that the AV receiver is cooled and that no more heat builds up. The solution is very simple and integrates two additional temperature controlled fans with their own power supply unit, ready to build solutions that are integrated into the device are used for this. The integration can be carried out quickly and easily. The OnQAV receiver is used here as an example. Of course, the circuit can also be integrated into any other device. The aim of this video is to install temperature controlled ventilation to extend the lifetime of the AV receiver, to prevent damage due to high heat, to avoid unnecessary repairs and to avoid electronic waste in the long term. The following accessories are required for the integration. Two Arctic F12DC fans with integrated temperature control. The total costs of the two fans is around 10 euro. The dimensions of the fans are 120 and 120 mm. The fans are operated in parallel with 12 volts DC voltage. The speed is between 300 until 2350 rotations per minute and ensures an airflow of approximately 90 cubic centimeters. The noise level from the fan is barely audible at 0.3 zone at 2350 rotations per minute and is ideally suited for installation in an AV receiver. The integrated temperature control in the fan ensures that the speed becomes faster with increasing temperature and that no extra circuit is required. One universal switching power supply 12 volts from Gube that operates between 3 and 12 volts. The costs are approximately 10 euros. The performance is maximum 1000 milliamps and 12 watts. The current consumption of a fan is assumed to be 130 milliamps at maximum speed. With two fans, a maximum current consumption of 260 milliamps can be expected. Therefore, the 1000 milliamps of the universal switching power supply unit are more than sufficiently dimensioned. The universal switching power supply unit is installed in order to provide the device with its own supply voltage for operating the fans. Since it cannot be guaranteed that sufficient power can be delivered for the two additional fans, the 12 volt supply voltage in the AV receiver is not tapped. The switching power supply is integrated in such a way that the 12 volts are only present when the AV receiver is switched on. There is no need to build a switching power supply for reasons of complexity and reduce costs. Cables for extending the built-in fan, branch terminals and plug pins for connecting the fans are required as additional accessories. Furthermore, double-sided extra strong adhesive tape and glue are required for fastening. A plastic housing is used to accommodate the switching power supply unit. The following tools are required. A crosshead screwdriver, pliers for pulling plugs and stripping cables, a soldering iron and soldering accessories, a voltmeter for measuring voltage and polarity. The links for the components and the accessories used can be found in the video description. 
otherwise some manual skills is required. That's all, so let's get started. The Onkyo device is opened with the screwdriver. The integrated fan is removed from the housing together with the bracket. The fan cable of the integrated fan is extended with a two-core cable. The extension of the cable is necessary so that the fan can later be glued into the housing cover and the housing cover can still be opened. Make sure that the polarity and good contact of the cables are correct. If the integrated fan is not recognized by the AV receiver, the AV receiver can no longer be switched on as a safety precaution. The universal switching power supply unit from Gubei is set to 12 volts and removed from the housing. The 12 volt output of the circuit is extended with two terminals for the parallel operation of the two arctic fans. Pin headers are soldered to the 12 volt outputs so that the arctic fans can be plugged in and unplugged quickly and easily. The arctic fan has three connections. The one marks the ground connection. In the middle the 12 volt supply voltage is connected. The third connection supplies a speed signal for speed measurement. The speed signal is not required here. A separate video shows how the speed of the fan can be read out easily. The universal switching power supply is soldered to the power supply with a 220 volts input. The universal switching power supply is stuck to a free space in the housing with double-sided adhesive tape. The location should be chosen as far away as possible from components susceptible to interference. In this case, the switching power supply is glued to the large transformer. The fans are installed in such a way that the warm air is sucked out of the housing. Cool air can then flow in. The direction of current is indicated by an arrow on the side of the fan. A reverse installation in the sense that cold air is blown from the outside through the fan into the housing is not effective here, since this would also suck in dust which would settle in the housing and cause contamination and even worse, waste heat there. The arctic fan has a 40 cm long cable for the power supply. The temperature sensor is attached to its own cable. With the cable length, the fan and sensor can be freely positioned in the housing. In our case, the temperature sensor is attached directly to the fan. The two fans are placed on the housing together with the integrated fan and the outlines are marked on the surface with a red pen. The double-sided tape is stuck into the corners of the outlines of the fans in the case. The adhesive tape must be heat resistant and must not lose its adhesive effect at higher temperatures. The top of the tape is peeled off. The fans are glued in with gentle pressure. After 24 hours, the fans are firmly attached to the case and can no longer be detached. The fans are plugged into the 12 volts output of the universal switching power supply. When the AV receiver is switched on, the fans start turning. The cover of the OnQ AV receiver can now be closed. Before closing, make sure that the ribbon cables of the HDMI board are carefully pressed so that the fans can rotate undisturbed. When closing, make sure that there are no moving parts in the area of the rotating fan. The AV receiver is screwed back on. The debug mode can be used to display the temperature during operation. To do this, 
Hold down the display button and press the on standby button twice. Then the tone button is pressed. The value 033 appears in the display. The temperature in the device is 33 degrees Celsius. So the integration is complete. The case of the Onq AV receiver has been cooled since then and no longer heats up. The fan noise is not audible during operation. Operation of the fans and air flow can be checked by hand over the slots. The temperature can be checked with the integrated debug mode. In my case, the temperature didn't rise above 33 degrees Celsius. The costs for the integration required assemblies such as fans and power supply with additional accessories for cables and plugs are less than 30 euros. There are also ready to buy solutions for cooling AV receivers. The fan system from AC Finity is placed on the AV receiver and sucks the warm air out of the device. At 130 euro, the costs are significantly higher than the solution presented here. The system is essential for AV receivers in closed environments. We are at the end. Please write me your ideas and suggestions for further improvement in the comments. If you liked the video, please give me a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, please give me a thumbs up twice.